This is Tonic Scar Radio. This is a warning. Welcome to Tonic Star Radio. Tonight we're interviewing AKA The Syndicate. On the video we have Laura, Gary and Sean. Thanks for joining us this evening. How are you all? Brian. Yeah, yeah, good, all thank good. you, sir. I've got, uh, got a few questions I'd like to ask you all. So, yeah. question number one. So when was the band formed? <laughs> um, I guess really it sort of started at the end of um, 20, oh, probably sort of the middle of 2019, I suppose. Um, uh, first of all, Sean and I sort of got together to do a, a song. Originally, we, we sort of met a few years previous to that playing in a, a band with uh, Monty Naismith. We were supporting, or we were his backing band. And I said to Sean, oh, we must do some stuff together, etc. And we yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that was it. Yeah. Um, and then, um, so then about 2019, I, I decided that I was going to start finishing a song, etc. And um, I gave Sean a call and said, look, I know we spoke about this. Are you up for it? I sent him the song. And he said, yeah, definitely. So that was kind of when it started. But then in 2020, that's when it really started going. Once the lockdown had, had sort of began and this dreadful situation that we're in now. Yeah. So who decided the name on AKA The Syndicate? That was me. <laughs> yeah. ba- basically, um, the, the idea behind the project was that you just get loads of guest people in to come and do some stuff and you know join in and play all the different um, different parts, instruments, etc. Yeah. Um, I play in a band called The Collective, which would have been a very good name for the project, but uh, obviously that had already been taken. So I thought something similar, it's like The Syndicate, so I just went with that. And there was a band called The Syndicate, so I just stuck AKA in the front and we got round it that way. Uh, so what bands have influenced you over the years? It obviously goes out to each of you. Uh, uh, for me, um, it probably, uh, uh, right from the start, my cousin was in Dexter Midnight Runner, so uh, uh, right from the start with the brass, everything like that. I used to play clarinet, but don't tell wow. anyone, it was embarrassing. But uh, uh, after that, the saxophone was pretty easy for that. So growing up with uh, Pete in Texas Midnight Runners and all that brass in there, and then it, it led into obviously the two-tone stuff, uh, and it's quite obvious our influences, and obviously mine, saxophone-wise, saxa, uh, and you know, it's a dream come true, me playing with the beats. After uh, and actually meeting Saxa and him seeing me play as well, which, which was fantastic. So those sort of people were the biggest influences for myself, really. Although I went through the indie stage and, and what have you, um, it's all come back and I'm playing the music I love, really, and um, just developed it through Gary's, aka the Syndicate, and what and looked every every minute of it, and including the beats as well, obviously. Okay. Laura? And for me, probably vocally, my roots are in jazz. So um, I like, well, you see, I've got Billy Holiday on the wall there. Billy Holiday, Etta James, Ella Fitzgerald, all those sorts of things. But ever since a young age, I've always been really obsessed with the kind of two tone movement. So Madness, the specials, the selector, all of that. And then more recently, I would say probably. Like Amy Winehouse, I like as well. Um, of course, Blondie as well, I like. Um, yeah, a bit of a mixture, really. Also, like house music, so it's, but it's a real mix for me. <laughs> Gary, I, for me, it's, um, growing up, like Two Tone came on the scene. I was I was about twelve when it first came out, and it just completely changed my life. That was it. I knew what I wanted to be. I wanted to be one of those. Loved the Two Tone thing, the beat, the bad manners. Um, then sort of like for, for me anything that Vince Clark's done I'm a huge fan of his and things like the Prodigy so you know quite a, a va- you know, a varied sort of mix but very much in the two tone and sort of mod camp I suppose yep uh, so currently who writes the songs in the band well that 
at, at the moment, the way that it's working, because we're all locked down and we can't get together, um, the, the easiest way that it seems to be working is I write the music and some of the lyrics. Um, and then it, now that Laura's um, on board, I can sort of write some music and I send it across to Laura and then she adds some lyrics and stuff and then Sean um, adds his saxophone and then one at a time we go into the yep. studio and record our parts. Um, but it, it, you know, once we're allowed out to play again, it'd be nice to all get together and write together. Yeah, like definitely. a reverse pass the parcel, you pass it around. Yeah. Someone else. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly it. I mean, what we what we say, we, you know, I haven't even met Laura in the flesh yet. Uh, obviously, I met Gary, but um, it, we've just done everything remotely. Although I, I, I feel like I know Laura really well because all we do is Zoom call and whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Never actually met her, and uh, that goes for most of the band as well. There's only three, four people at the band I've actually met physically in person. We've all done it remotely because of the lockdown and all that. Yeah, I think I've met three. I worked out because of Gary, Bobby, and Roddy. Everyone else I haven't met yet. It's also been, yeah, on the WhatsApp, Zooms, and all that kind of stuff, really. Yeah. yeah. So obviously, you've just mentioned they're recorded remotely at the moment. So, do you have a record, record label currently? No, it's it's all a DIY project. Um, we, Is there any plans to go to a record label? It would be lovely. Um, mm -hmm. I think, to be honest, it's, it's something that would be nice to think of, but I'll be honest, I haven't got a clue how to even approach something like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's just... You go along, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's exactly it. It's like, you know, there is no um, strategy for this. It's just sort of, it's only supposed to be one song. Um, and it's yeah. just completely it's not what it is now. <laughs> exactly. I, exactly. I think the phrase we say all the time is, well, that escalated. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I understand you've got a new single out. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the song? What's it about? Yep, so um, Gary sent me the music for, for this song and he gives it a working title. And the working title for this one was called View From My Window. So sometimes I use his working title as a bit of inspiration of what to write about. So I was thinking of all the windows I've ever looked out of and places I've lived. And I was really thinking at the time about living in London and when I was living in places like Brixton and Peckham and sort of watching that mixture of gentrification and also sort of the other side of the city being quite poor and you know, full of maybe some unsavoury and interesting characters so the song is kind of about the two sides of the city as in you know those two sides it, I mean I was thinking about London but I guess it could be could be about anywhere really any city so to speak yeah mm -hmm. right let's uh, let's take a sneak preview of that song now Okay, that was uh, that was the new single. <coughs> yeah. 
So when's, when's the actual single out? Where can people actually purchase this track from? So it's coming out on the 5th of March, which is my mum's birthday. <laughs> so you can hear it, hear it even more on her birthday. Um, we're releasing it digitally, so it'll be on Spotify, iTunes, and we've also working on a video, so there'll be a video that comes out on the day as well. Okay. Any any plans for CD to come out on? I think we're going to save that for the album. So for singles at the moment, we're uh, just doing it digitally, and then obviously when the album comes out, it'll be on that. And I think it would be lovely if we could do CDs and potentially vinyl as well. Yeah. What, uh, so, I'm going to throw a random question here. What other songs are going to be on the album? <laughs> well, it's, it's kind of... Um, it's some, well, what, have the, of, what, have the view, uh, what have the listeners got got to look forward to, really? Well, there's, there's lots of different songs that are on there, and, and the whole the whole thing about the project is um, it, it's got lots of guests. So, um, Clara from Daka Skanks has done a couple of songs. Um, Laura's done sort of four or five. There's a lady called Maxine who who's is in the same studio as us, if you like, Panther Sounds, Panther Studios in Rygate, which is a fantastic place to go to. Um, she's got an album coming out, but she's very kindly done a song with us. Um, uh, Aaron from the Trojan Beats has done a couple of songs with us. Um, there's a guy, uh, there's a, gu- a guy called Reg who plays in London Calling. It's a, a Clash tribute band. He's done a couple of songs with us. Um, there's possibly an instrumental that Fu Manchu might be on it, but uh, it's it's. I'm getting quite excited about. It, I have to say, I think that the songs have come a long way, and I'm looking forward to it coming out. And there's a, there's another guy you forgot. Um, Gary, that's uh, Roddy, who's uh, from the specials. I don't know. Sorry, I was, thinking, I was thinking of singers, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about the singers. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, well, he, cl- he classes himself as a singer, don't forget. <laughs> We've, we've been very lucky that um, people like Roddy Radiation has um, played on a couple of tracks and you know he's just such a nice guy a fantastic guitarist and the sound that he gets and you know he, he I, I cheekily asked him if he'd play on a track uh, and then when he said yes I said how about two um, and when he came down and he, we just let him get on with it and he just did his Roddiness and it's just fantastic you know so proud of it and you know what an honour to have him sort of on our track and we've we've also recorded um, a couple of tracks with Monty Naismith um, from Simmerip. Um, he <laughs> this is one track that we did was recorded in Surrey, Atlanta, Florida, and Canada. Because um, when I sent it over to Monty, he did his vocals, then he sent it to Keith and Tex to add their backing vocals on it. You know, it was like unbelievable. You know, wow, yeah, absolutely amazing. And we're so so chuffed with that track. But um, yeah, so this. We've been very spoiled, and um, Paul Gray from The Damned has um, played with us, um, and a guy called Martin Parrott, who's the drummer with um, Johnny Moped, uh, The Weird Things, and The Sensible Gray Cells with Captain Sensible, and uh, they're very good. I think if, if you want to pigeonhole it, it's very diff- difficult, because we've gone from slightly punk, almost, to almost lovers rock, on a, yeah. on a, and, the, and everything sort of in between. So you'll find a lot on the LP, there's a lot of different influences and things, but it, it, we've sort of tried to keep it, you know, we, there's a brass uh, brass section, uh, um, obviously brilliant vocals, um, uh, so a, a very musical sort of sound rather than the, the rubbish that's around today. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that's a good point, that we, you know, we there is a, a good mishmash if you like of yeah. you know like two-tone sounding songs um old school reggae sounding songs like sean says love of lovers rock the clash but th- th- this this album has got very much a a reggae feel to it yeah so apart, from, reggae sky. apart from obviously doing the single what else have you been doing during lockdown that could be on a personal level <laughs> uh, yeah it could be anything well, nothing from the beat, that's for sure, because uh, we're <laughs> obviously not going out of the house. So uh, um, we, we were the beat were planning to do stuff at one stage, uh, like record some stuff. Yeah. But um, yeah, obviously, with, with the with the lockdown and stuff, they're not done anything. So put all well, I've put a lot of efforts into this side of um, 
I did as well. I work now and again as well. So in between that, it's it, it's. <laughs> It, I think we we all have that. We we put a lot of effort into um, mm. yeah, very much so. lockdown, you know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think it's normally I sing with the Scar Tonics, and we're normally gigging sort of at least once or twice a week. So I haven't had that for a year. So I've had a lot more time on my hands with that, and not commuting up to London to sort of put a lot of time into this and focus on you know learning songwriting and. Um, sort of doing, looking at the marketing side of things and you know how that works and so it's just been quite an educational experience, just opportunity. How to learn how to use Zoom as well. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, we haven't got that sorted yet. <laughs> just like a nice bunch of people, everyone's just easy going and, and you know fun to get on with so um, yeah it's been lovely. So spending a lot of time on that and then yeah as Sean says working here and there <laughs> yeah. wherever I can. Okay, so what's, um, obviously I know you don't do gigs at the moment, but what, uh, what's what been your favourite gig you've ever been to? Hmm, in terms of playing or... Uh, uh, both, either. Uh, for me playing was um, in the Scartonics when we played at House of Fun, um, yeah. the Madness Festival. We somehow managed to get a slot on the main stage the, <laughs> a couple of hours before Madness. And um, it was just electric atmosphere. It was just a brilliant weekend. Big crowd turned up. Everything was so slick and professional. The stage was huge. <laughs> but normally Is that the one that, that's the one at Butlins. Yeah, yeah, that's it. It's Butlins. And uh, normally we're all nine of us were squidged in like this, and we <laughs> it was sort of Lee, the other singer, was like. 10, 10 meters away from me so you sort of stood on that stage i thought blimey <laughs> this is this is big so yeah that, that was probably my favorite one to play um in terms of going to a gig it was just a really not a favorite band of mine at all but the reason why i like this gig is because i didn't really know who they were and then when i went to see them i was like wow there's a flaming lips um i would have heard a couple of their songs before I sort of thought, mm, whatever. But I went to see them live and I was like blown away because they sort of do all these visual effects and uh, it really is a, a show. <laughs> so that's the one that stands out for me in terms of what I've seen. Sean, Gary? Uh, for me personally, I suppose the beat ones, um, when I played, uh, when we did the two tone tour um, 2019 with Roddy and Neville, when that started in London, and the, uh, the place was rammed in there. That was uh, fantastic. And, and to be obviously with your heroes on stage as well um, and got on with them brilliantly. Uh, Roddy and Neville, Christine, you know, it was a fantastic gig. And the other one was um, I played in Birmingham at uh, a Mosley Festival. Um, and our dressing room with the beat was with uh, Della Soul, Grandmaster Flash and uh, Craig Charles, which is quite <laughs> interesting. Um, Grandmaster Flash's um, yeah. entourage was bigger than, uh, well, mo most of the bands that there, and they just all looked after him and followed him round in a great um, uh, chaos chaotic thing. So, uh, yeah, that was quite memorable. Uh, ones I've been to, probably when Madness reformed, Specials reformed, those two gigs when Roddy and Neville were still play uh, playing with them then. That The Specials were fantastic. I, I mean, I, I haven't been to a gig like that. Because uh, I missed them the first time round, um, but yeah, those, those two were brilliant. And seeing Blondie again, to be honest, because uh, my other half she knows bits of uh, Blondie, and we've actually got to meet her, which was uh, uh, the the woman who was up on my wall for years and years. <laughs> I actually I actually met her, which was, and I believe me, I, I couldn't speak for a week. Or <laughs> <laughs> uh, Gary. I think for me the best gig that I've been to, um, it, because it coincided with my 50th weekend, so way back years ago, and it was um, the specials and Toots and the Maytals at, at Hatfield. It was just a brilliant weekend. It was just uh, the icing on the cake was having those two wonderful bands play, and they were just fantastic. And what what a loss you know Toots has been to you know to the world. But to, um, in terms of playing, um, the two for me that stand out. One was playing with the collective at the Dublin Castle a tiny wonderful venue and the place just goes mental and the place where you get nice and hot and sweaty yeah, oh, yeah we, 
yeah, yeah. <laughs> you definitely need to make sure you stay hydrated. Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. It's just for atmosphere. It's just electric, and I think you you have to go. For me, you just have to go a long way to beat it. And the, my other favourite gig that I played, is, I was lucky enough to play with um, Simmerit Pyramid in um, a bar in Germany, and it was just absolutely fantastic. And you know, I'm I'm a nobody. You know, you're playing with these heroes and legends, etc. And uh, I got off stage afterwards, and this dirty great big German skinhead you know, came up to me and said, "I know you." I thought you can't possibly know me. I've never been to Germany. <laughs> uh, he was actually at the Monty Naismith gig that Sean and I met in Brighton, and he remembered me from that. Bizarre, <laughs> absolutely bizarre. Small world, see? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Six degrees of separation. All that, absolutely. You know. <laughs> so, what what other guest musicians have you got lined up? Um, well, we're talking to sort of th- different people, sort of going along, but until sort of things come up and opportunities arise I don't want to say anything because if it, at the moment I don't want to cause any problems for anybody in a little band like 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 yeah. that we're in type of thing because once we're all allowed out to play etc then they're going to be focusing on their day jobs if you like yeah. um, in terms of some of the celebrities and yeah I mean the legends again there's a few people that I've, I've started conversations with but once the right song comes up along with them then yeah I mean definitely we'll be recording with Monty again and uh, Roddy again yeah. in fact I've just just sort of done something with Roddy uh, with uh, Monty now and uh, he got um, a guy from uh, I think Fab Five or whatever to, to do some backing vocals on it and you know, these, the harmonies that these guys are getting etc it's just absolutely amazing you just listen to it and you just get blown away and you think wow I'm so lucky that they're playing on our stuff uh, yeah I mean there's there's a few people as well we're, we're sort of talking to but we can't really say as, as yeah. because it will cause a lot of hassle with other people yeah. so uh, yeah. <laughs> and we, we're just going to work out how to do it and whether they they can do it uh, well hopefully for nothing you know so, <laughs> That, that's the huge caveat. Yeah. <laughs> so have you got any plans in the future to gig as AKA the Syndicate? I think initially, uh, when we first started, no. But, you know, we've got such a kick out of this. But, yeah, I think it would be nice to do... You know, we are so proud of the album. I think, I, I, I guess you two are the same. So, yeah, we'd love to get out and do a few gigs. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Would that be every, with everybody else or with this, the three of you or... Well, that's a logistical uh, yeah. no. yeah, yeah. when everything opens again and everyone's obviously in different bands as it is. It's, but I'm sure, you know, if we could, you know, find that sweet, sweet spot date where everyone can do, I'm sure everyone would be up for doing a live gig. I think it'd be fantastic. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, we, we have got a core um, lot of people, uh, who sort of six or seven people, who probably if we could get them to do the gigs, it, uh, um, and we could we could actually do the gig, you know. And uh, as I said before, that the brass section that we've got, uh, not me, but the other two as well, um, Bobby on trumpet and um, uh, Fiona on trombone. That, that the actual brass end grill, you know, it, it, to play a live gig would be, would be fantastic. I mean, we've we've got I've got uh, beat fans, real mad beat fans who who love the beat, and to be honest, not much else. Who've heard our stuff and really like it? There's a guy called Mac Hammer uh, and Kayvon who come to all the beat gigs and love them to bits, uh, and they've heard our stuff and really like it as well. So big up to Mac and um, Kayvon, you know they've, they've really liked it, and it's been a, a joy to play to them as well, and then actually like something different as well, which is nice. I think we are. So you we are sorry, we are very spoiled that the musicians that have been involved with the project are brilliant. You know. Bob on drums, a fantastic reggae drummer. The brass section that Sean's mentioned is fantastic. You know, Connor from Dacus Skanks has played guitar on a couple of tracks, and you know, every, everybody that's been involved has, has just been like, wow, brilliant. I was going to say, my next question would be, uh, was it like working with the proven singers and musicians? It's fabulous. I mean, for, for me, it's. I, I keep saying it. You know, I, I overuse this word, overwhelmed. And it's, it's just absolutely brilliant. And I think one of the advantages that we've had about the lockdown is that we've just said like to Sean or to Bobby, can you go into the studio and just play a trumpet part or a sax part for this? 
um, muted whoever went in first and just recorded it. And then we've had the, the unenviable task of going, well, both of those are brilliant. Which one are we going to pick? How are we going to get this lot together? <laughs> and it's fantastic. I mean, you know, like like when Roddy came down and played and did his bit, it was like, great. That's absolutely brilliant. What an honour. You know, it is, it is overwhelming. Everybody that's been involved with the project are very talented musicians, and I think if we're lucky enough to get on stage together, I think it's going to be very exciting. And, and the, 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 you know, we've got a uh, Tempo Tudor original uh, bass player in uh, Richard. I think he's a bass player, wasn't he? Um, yeah. uh, Richards, who's doing the producing, and also played with King Kerr. And he. Uh, as, oh, wow. Well, I, 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 I remember King Kerr. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You were one of those in the crowd getting messy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, he, he doesn't um, remember that with too much fondness, but he, he's a, he just guided us wherever we need, and he, he's a fantastic producer. Yeah. And his studio, Pant Studio, he's been uh, our home, really, in, in the lo- lockdown. Very talented guy, both musically and being able to, to cut, cut something into something, which is fantastic. Mm. Okay. My next question would would be really, I suppose, uh, hands up who's coming with me, featuring Roddy. What's it? What's it? Out, obviously, you mentioned earlier yeah, that he's a really nice guy. What's it like working with him? Brilliant! It was just such a nice experience. It was. Um, he is a nice guy in general. He, he is. He's, he's an absolute diamond. Yeah, he's down to earth, and he, he he's always looking to do something for you as well. well so I, was, I, was on, I was on tour with him for a year, really, on and off. Uh, in the two-tone tour with um, Scarbilly Rebels and Neville's band as well. Uh, yeah. And it was like, you know, the Beat and, or the Beat GB and Scarbilly Rebels were really good mates at the end of it. And, and Roddy's just a, a really nice, uh, uh, can't keep saying he's a nice chap, he'll get really upset about that. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know. He'll probably watch this later anyway, so. Exactly, yeah, thinking, bloody hell, I didn't think I was a nice guy, my God. <laughs> but, but yeah, it, it's... Uh, it's a joy working with him. I never ever thought that I'd actually be working with Roddy Reggae no. from the specials. Blimey, no. <laughs> and when, and we, as I say, we were lucky enough that it was um, at a time when we were allowed out to play. <clears throat> so Roddy very kindly came down to Surrey, you know, with his guitar, went into the studio, and we just said, "Look, if you could do it, this sort of sound is what we're looking for." And bang, you know, so, okay, yeah, that was fantastic. Fancy another go, for, just for fun. <laughs> he's just like, just completely nailed it. He's just, he just has, I think he's a brilliant talent and he just gets such a great sound. Right, okay, that's the only questions I've got, but I've got a few viewers' questions. So I've got Paul from London. He says, Sean, he understands obviously you're, you're playing the sax for the beat. Yeah. Is there any plans, obviously, going forward? Are you got, have you got any gigs coming up with the beat? Or what's, what's your plans, your whole plans with, regarding the beat? That's what he wants to know. Well, the, the, well, the beat, beat UGB, so we should. Yeah, the, 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 the beat GB is basically Everett, um, yeah. the original drummer. Uh, you've got Neil, who's the guitarist from the International Beat. Uh, Mickey, who was, was uh, uh, the keyboard player with the beat uh, at the end, and uh, obviously played with Dexys, Midnight Runners, Rope, Common Eileen, and all that sort of stuff. So it's a, it's a big band as such um but obviously over lockdown we've not done a fat loss the the idea was we were going into the studio to do some original new stuff and um potentially uh we've got some gigs lined up because we've got a there's a new singer as well Deminus, uh, who's uh, a brilliant uh, singer we had a load of gigs last year but they all had to be cancelled we've got one in cardiff definitely which is uh, in August, but we don't know about uh, the others, so I can't really say until lockdown sorted out. But the plan is to get back on the road with the beat and, uh, and and sort of play again as soon as possible. Really, as soon as this is uh, this is all over, we might have to be social distancing, but um, yeah, it, it's still going to Or take <clears throat> or outdoor tables. Like that, they're doing like three, four tables at a time or something stupid like that. Yeah, yeah, we played the Skinhead Festival. I think that was our last one we did last year. And um, that was, uh, you, they wouldn't let you get up and stand up and even jig No, they wouldn't let you stand up and sit, yeah, dance yeah. or anything. No. 
it was a bit, <laughs> bit crazy. And uh, in the end, um, after after we played, they they couldn't have any more bands play on there because because there's so many people trying to stand up and dance, which, which is uh, it's ridiculous, really. But obviously, we want all this to be finished, so it's all going to be within the the rules and stuff. So as soon as that's all done, we'll be out there somewhere. Yeah. Um, we've got another one, Simon from South Sea. It's to Gary. He understands obviously there's a gig coming up with the yes. AKA The Collective. Yes. Will that still be going ahead? Fingers crossed, yeah, hopefully. I mean, well, it all depends all... what Boris says tomorrow. That's exactly. What we're, tomorrow. we're all waiting for the the, uh, the announcement sort of thing, but uh, I think it's got to be looking hopeful that, um, you know, if we've got the socially distance and uh, the guy that's put the event on has put events on as well previously during the, the like the um, tier three, two, etc. And I think he's followed the rules. It's a very big venue, and that's I think isn't it? So, yes, it is. Yeah, uh, it's, it's a very big venue, and they, this it's big enough to space the tables out um, and to put on a good night. So yeah, fingers crossed, touch wood, and everything. But, uh, you know, we're all living sort of day to day and just like Sean's saying, I don't think there's a band in the country that can't wait to get out. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I've got another one to over to Laura. So it's Terry from I can't remember where it lives, Maidstone Way. Any, any Scartonic plans for an album or recording? Well, I know last year, sort of start of last year, we were talking about getting back into the studio to do some recording, but obviously with the, what's happened last year, it's all kind of died down a little bit. So I think the main priority for us at the moment is to just get back to live gigs as soon as possible. We've got some amazing things lined up this year, like in terms of festivals and things. So mm -hmm. I'm praying that it will come back for summer. Um, and then normally, sort of over the winter period, when it's a little bit quieter, that's normally when we go into the studio. So I think, you know, there's every chance that we will go and do something, whether it's a covers um, EP or whether it's original material again. But I guess we'll just have to wait and see what happens this year and whether we can meet up. Because I think there was a point when, if you're in a band of under five or six, you could meet up and rehearse. But obviously there's nine of us, so... <laughs> Uh, I have to drop for you. Really have you, yeah. <laughs> so we can't even meet up to, to write or to sort of see each other, really. But, yeah. Yeah, no, but, yeah we'd like to, I think, but there's no like, solid plans at the moment. Uh, Steve from Leeds wants to know what's the long term plans for AKA The Syndicate? I think, <laughs> I think really to finish this album. Um, uh, this album is pretty much finished and I think to be honest it should be ready to go and then um, be put onto vinyl etc hopefully from the end of March so we're hoping to get it out in the summer all we need is an album cover and a title minor details <laughs> um, but um, we've we've obviously you know stopped that one drawn a line under it but Laura and I have sort of like probably about halfway to three quarters through planning and writing a second album um it's just a fabulous way of working you know i'll, I'll put some stuff together whatsapp it over to to laura she'll I'll say yeah i like that and put some lyrics to it and then send that back and then when we can we'll try and get into the studio and, and you know it, it makes life easy the way that we're working but uh, it would be lovely to all get together and write some stuff but yeah. yeah do a few gigs and just keep going all the time it's fun and everybody's smiling let's keep going yeah. I think that's it, isn't it? It's as long as everyone's enjoying it and, you know, we're producing good stuff and people kind of like what they hear, so you can just keep it going. Yeah. All right, I've got another one. Don't ask me how he knows this. Uh, I've got Mick from the Midlands. He understands that Roddy was meant to be on this this single, but obviously being with the lockdown, he can't come down. Don't ask me how he knows that, but... Yeah. He's just saying, yeah. well, obviously, well, obviously... In future, he's just basically saying, will Roddy be involved in anything else? Yeah. I hope so. Yeah, we were talking to Roddy about hearing on this one, and we did have some time booked in January. Um, but then, obviously, that couldn't happen. Um, but I think, you know, if Roddy wants to work with us, then I, I would absolutely love to be on a track with Roddy, because, obviously, I wasn't on hands up, so... <laughs> 
if he if he'd be willing to plan another song in the future, that would be absolutely amazing. But I'm sure he would if he likes the song. <laughs> yeah, I've got one last question, Kev from Medway. It's over to Laura. <coughs> Me. He wants to know whether you're going to do any more tracks with AKA and Syndicate. Yep, yep. <laughs> as long as Gary keeps firing them over, I'll keep writing. <laughs> We've got one today. <laughs> um, yeah, do you know what? I Because Gary's so quick and the way that we're working is quite fluid and um, it's quite easy. As long as... Gary's coming up with the songs for me to write to, and as long as I'm sort of getting the inspiration and lyrics, then I'm just going to keep it going. <laughs> but it's all very new for me, you see, so I've only sort of done, I've written one song with the Scartonics, or co-written with, with Lee and Scartonics, and I also co-wrote one with Block 33, but this single now is probably my first go at writing something and getting it finished. So I feel like I'm sort of at the start of my songwriting journey, so it would be good to keep it carrying on and to keep sort of exploring different parts of the genre and um, sort of coding skills and, yeah, seeing where it gets to, really. I think it's really, for me, it's really good fun in that we're, we're both, all of us are, are learning, etc. And, and, and when it comes to songwriting, Laura and I, are, you know, we're both learning this. We're, we're new to it. We're having a lot of fun. And, you know, between us, it'll be like, I think that's good, but could you just add this bit and do that bit? And then we'll go away and do the bits that we need to do, etc. And then when we've got it to an almost ready structure, we'll chuck it over to Sean and he'll then put his sax parts on it and, you know, anybody else that's on that. And, and then when we've got it as a, a draft work in progress file, you know, that's the great thing about everything's electronic. Mm. And then um, we take it into Richard, uh, Richard at um, Panther Sounds. Mm. And then and we've we done start. Quite a variety as well. Like, well, from my point of view, you know, I've done. A, whereas this song is kind of like, I'd say, quite two tone sort of style. Then we've done one that's a little bit more sort of uh, upbeat, maybe on more on the poppy side as well. And then one, not for this album, but for the next one that's more kind of lovers rock style. So we're just sort of exploring all different avenues, really, and sort of seeing what comes out and. Yeah, it's been good to take a sort of experiment with different types of songs, really. Okay, that's that's all the questions I've got for you. Um, would you like to say anything to the listeners or viewers that are going to be viewing this? <laughs> I've I've created a website for us. <laughs> so if you, if you go on www.akthesyndicate.com, you'll find all the information now on there. Um, yeah, obviously the single's coming out on the 5th of March, so obviously download it, stream it. Yeah, be nice. Like it, share it. <laughs> and listen out for the LP as well. We've got we've got a lot of people, as I say, who, who are, have really liked the stuff we're doing, which is very nice. I say the guys who love the beats. There's a guy called Charlie who's done so much uh, almost journalistic stuff for us as well. Um, and we're, we're, we're blessed really with having so many nice people around as well that we can actually grow it and we're really, I think we're all just really dying to get the LP out and, and get out there and, and put the vinyl on the wall and spray it gold, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I think, and for me, I just personally thank everybody in the band that's been a bit involved with the project. Um, and thank everybody that's listened to the songs that we've we have released. It, it's overwhelming, you know. When I first started this with uh, talking to Richard, he said, "What do you expect?" I said, "If I can get four people to listen to it, it's been amazing." You know, and I think the, <laughs> the hands up video version one and then version two collectively probably had about seventy to eighty thousand views, which is like, oh my god, someone's nan must have left it on loop or something. But, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's absolutely brilliant so thank you everybody for your support and your help and and the people that we've we've um let have listens to things to sort of test how it's going etc thank you for your constructive feedback it's been very good and thank you to every radio station that's played us especially you guys yeah thanks for having us yes <laughs> thank you very much cheers, cheers guys Bye. thank you thanks if you want